Eric Lonsdale fan, and I don't really do reviews, particularly gun reviews. I just do gun commentary. So right now, I'd like to give a commentary on this thing right here. This is, of course, the C Camp, or often called the LWS, and in this particular one is in 32. And let me uh, make an apology right now. You're going to see this little duct tape that's just covering up the serial number of this particular gun, and that's just for I don't need uh, Google, YouTube, and everybody else on social media trying to just uh, make a record of my uh, the guns that I have. So, in any point, um, this is uh, my particular little C camp, and um, I uh, just took it out to the range. I really, really like this pistol just for kind of the cool factor alone and a little bit of the historic um, value of the company itself. If there's one thing that I definitely don't like about it, it's just, it's a little, it's a little finicky. Not in its function and its reliability, but in the way that you handle it. And I'll give you an example. It doesn't matter if you're a 1911 guy or you're a Glock guy. Most everybody knows, here's your automatic pistol, okay, go ahead and load it. Magazine in, rack the slide, okay, check to make sure it's loaded, all that good stuff. Unload it, same way, check the magazine, lock the slide back, double check, close the magazine, trick the trigger if you have to. And even if you're a 1911 guy, you pretty much know that, or girl, um, that it's the same way, it's just now that you're dealing with a thumb safety. Well, guess what? In this case, you don't do that. <laughs> this is a very, very picky gun on how it's designed and even how the manufacturers have said uh, how the gun functions. So loading it is the same way. You'll find that I'm using snap caps. Um, and for, by the way, I hate snap caps, but for this gun, you will need to likely buy some. Anyway, so loading it is good. This particular one has a little manual safety that must be off. This is a state compliant model. Don't even get me started. Anyway, so the safety needs to be off and you can go ahead and rack the slide. Check, there's a little hole there to make sure that you can, it's like a loaded chamber indicator. No problem, right? Well, unloading, yeah, a little bit, but here's the thing with unloading. Pop the magazine just about that much because you won't be able to rack the slide with the magazine all the way out. And you don't want to force it either. So, but of course you can't rack the magazine with the uh, chambered round, so you gotta halfway pop it out like so. Turn it upside down drop it and now do the magazine but of course you can't really double check other than there's a little hole in there and for me personally I don't like doing that so yeah you're having to empty a magazine in there and go yeah okay now it's an empty gun it takes a little getting used to but you can eventually get used to another thing that C camp tells you to do is never 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 and I'll explain why when we break this thing down. Never, never, never pull this trigger, even dry firing, with the magazine just even partially out, and especially not all the way out. But they tell you that empty mag, empty chamber, go ahead and dry practice all you want. No problem. So long as the magazine is completely seated in. Because if you should ever even intentionally or unintentionally pull this trigger, you could actually damage the pistol. But, okay, not a big deal. And what is kind of a reminder of that constantly is the heel release, the European style magazine, which I don't consider a necessarily a bad thing. This is not supposed to be something that you can tactically reload. So having a um, side uh, magazine release is button is not an issue in fact it kind of almost reminds me constantly to about that rule of don't pull the trigger until the magazine is fully seated 
So let me go into uh, why that is. Okay. There are plenty of videos and uh, you can read the manuals on how to field strip a C camp. All right, so I entered this, pull the snap cap and you're supposed to push the pin in here and the thing lifts off. Well, as even the company will admit, with new, brand new pistols, because they remember these are hand fitted guns, um, it um, can be a little tight. So what you will also need to do and I went ahead and did it, and once again these are all snap caps, is you can see how the magazine just popped out, and the reason being is because I have a snap cap loaded, and what I found that does is it helps, it pushes, it causes enough pressure on the slide so that when you go to pop it out, it just pops out a little easier. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, field strip the pistol. Uh, mostly wanted to show you guys one thing, Look, of the only thing that I don't like about this is I guess it's good and bad but your magazine is so reliant on this pistol to make it work but we'll talk about more of that later for right now I want to talk about why you don't want to pull the trigger um, at any time unless you have a seated magazine if you notice now I've got the magazine inserted and this uh, left grip panel goes over like here. Well that between the grip panel and the magazine this keeps the both will keep the spring in line. This is the drawbar spring. If you should ever try to pull the trigger without the magazine in what will happen is this spring will want to push inward into the uh, empty well of where the magazine would be. And this, of course, gets all bent out. Um, yes, this is a cheap part to replace, and you can do it yourself, but uh, why damage the pistol like that? As long as you've got a magazine inserted and this plate is over, the spring has basically a perfect guide sandwiched in between there, and there's no issue. C-Camp says that it's the number one uh, request they get for replacement parts and uh, warranty issues is because people just they want to see, oh really, is it is it really that bad? And they pull the trigger and sure enough, the, uh, the spring goes inside and now you, to the point where you can't even insert the magazine anymore. So, just real quick on that. Most people know is that the C-Camp is made to fire hollow point bullets. It was initially designed around the Winchester silver tip hollow point. And they often told you not to fire full jacketed rounds. And the question is, well, why is that? Well, because they weren't quite as reliable. Using that, I had to fire them one at a time, and I'll explain why for a second. But if you look at, just look at the, these are three different versions. This is when, the center one is Winchester's full metal jacket, and you can just tell it's taller than the hollow point. And to translate that, that means that, well, you can usually, without a problem, load the first round, by the time you go to load the second one, that nose is rubbing up against the edge of the magazine. I don't know how reliable that was, or that could be. So I just wouldn't do that. What I did do at the range, because I didn't want to spend a lot of money putting hollow points down the range, plus uh, it took me a long time to find uh, silver tip ammo, is just to load one at a time. There's no problem in just loading one, racking the slide, and firing it. And that's what I did just to get used to how it fires. But if you can just tell, that's just way too close. And pressing down and putting another round, is that's probably what's going to happen. As opposed to the silver tip, which is just completely free. And uh, most hollow points will be like that. I also bought uh, Gold Dot, and which um, they also recommend has worked really well. And much like the silver tips, their flat nose allows for it to be completely full. So something to keep in mind. So what, uh, when I show you the footage of the range, what I'm doing is I'm firing one bullet at a time. So the Seacamp pistol, of course, has no sights, as it was designed for close range combat at about seven yards or less. But unfortunately, at my gun club that I belong to, the range is set up for standard NRA bullseye targets at about 50 feet away. 
making it extremely difficult to cite anything. But I found that with a little bit of practice, I was able to actually hit a paper plate that I pinned up at about 50 feet. Now keep in mind, because of the limit on ammunition, I had to fire it one shot at a time. But nonetheless, I was able to find a sighting picture that did work. And yeah, I know it's supposed to be by design. There are no sights. You're just supposed to point shoot. Okay, but unfortunately, most of us are reliant on some kind of sighting. And at least in this case, when I was taken to the range and was having to fire it from 50 feet away, standard bullseye, you got no choice but to sight a little bit. Yeah, at this range, it's real, pretty simple. Okay, center mass, boom, shoot. Okay, but when you're shooting from far away doesn't quite work like that so what I found is this I want to put like if I'm aiming at this head target I want to put like that pumpkin on a post but basically what I want to see this as is a front sight so I'm placing that front sight which is the entire back of the gun uh, minus the back strap right there and if you notice if I put it a little left or right or even up or down it just doesn't feel like it's pointing but when I can make everything disappear except this front sight, and I can use the hammer, you see the movement of the hammer, as kind of that center post, then all of a sudden I'm shooting pretty good. Not too bad. Um, remember it's a double action trigger, so don't start doing this. So it's a straight back pull, as long as you keep it right on line. And put that pumpkin on a post, if you will, because this thing does tend to shoot a little low so um, for example don't cover it like so because you'll find out that you're hitting a little low so just a real quick take on the C camp and uh, also just uh, what makes it such a unique gun for me and what gives it a little bit of a cool factor is this for those of us old enough to remember not necessarily when they first came out or the company first started but when they were first uh, uh, written about in all the gun magazines uh, back in the mid 80s um, at the time and place think about it in terms of a small gun you were very limited uh, for concealed carry the dominant uh, handgun of course was some kind of Smith & Wesson J frame or uh, some kind of snub nose 38 uh, revolver if you wanted a small pistol you were limited very much in terms of you either had the cheap set what they used to call Saturday night specials like the Raven Arms uh, Beretta made a few but they only came usually in 25 caliber or less they did make the Tomcat which is a little bigger it's almost a full size by today's standards there really wasn't a lot of options so C camp kind of stood out as being the only one of this size keep in mind I can take my whole palm and just cover the entire pistol C Camp was the only gun that you could have in this size that would still be a quality handgun, showing no signs of it slowing down. You know, it's still a good, solid uh, um, gun. It's still selling well. Um, there are a couple of companies that have tried to copy it, but even to this day, this remains the smallest American made, high quality pistol that you can buy, and it will still serve you well. So there's something to be said about a small company. It's said to be, uh, there's only about uh, anywhere from five to 10 uh, employees who actually work for C Camp. And they only make, if you think about it, they only make this gun. There's just uh, three different calibers. But really it says something to the effect of when the same gun, very small company is still making the same product and it's still selling well. That, that says a lot about its quality and it's a very well made quality gun. Well that's all I got for the C Camp 32 pistol. God bless you and those you love.